Good Erev Shabbos, everyone. This week's parsha is that of Emor. It begins with the laws in regard to the Kahanim, that they are not allowed to attend funerals, go to the cemetery, come into contact with the deceased, unless, of course, for immediate family. And the parsha continues with other laws in regard to a Kohen and his sacred service in the temple. The parsha begins, and Hashem speaks to Moshe and says, Emor el Kahanim b'nei Ahari. Say to the Kahanim, the sons of Aaron, the Amato Alehem, and you should say unto them the laws of avoiding the Tumah, the impurity associated with death. Our sages ask, there seems to be a repetition here, which is unnecessary. Say to the Kahanim, the sons of Aaron, and say unto them, say and say, what are these two things referring to? In addition, the first time it says, say or speak to the Kahanim, the sons of Aaron, and it doesn't tell us what Moshe should say. Even if it would have told us, we still have the first question, why speak to them about this, speak to them about that? It could have been more concise. The second question is that it says, speak to them, and it doesn't tell us what. Rashi tells us, more like a Hanim, speak to the Kahanim. What is that referring to? And more of your Marta, speak to the Kahanim and say to the Kahanim, what are the two things? That this is that the adults are to teach the children. That is, speak to the Kahanim that they should speak to the children Kahanim and let them know of their mitzvahs. The Ramban asks a question and says, this is of course true, but this is not isolated to just kahanim. This is not a, this is the mitzvah of chinuch, of training our children. Every single Jew has a mitzvah to instruct their children. This is kosher, this is not kosher. This is what we do on Shabbos, this is what we don't do on Shabbos. This is how we celebrate Pesach with the Seder. This is how we celebrate Sukkot. Why then would the Torah teach us this law of chinuch habonim, training our children, educating our children in regard to the Kahana? And the Ramban says, this is the source. Indeed, the Torah doesn't mean to say, here is the mitzvah and exclude elsewhere but rather there is a responsibility and an obligation on every Jewish parent to educate their children, and this is the source. The question is, why does the Torah choose the responsibility of a Kohen to teach his children as the source for this particular law? The Torah could have presented this in which it could have said, speak to the children of Israel and say unto them, on Pesach we should eat matzah and morah and bring the Paschal Lent. And we could have had the same drasha. Speak to the adults that they should teach the children. Why did the Torah select the laws of the Kohen to be the source of teaching us this law? The Bnei Soska <clears throat> tells us that when Hashem tells Moshe and Mora Lakahanim Bnei Aaron, Speak to the Kahanim, the sons of Aaron. What is he telling them? It's not just identifying who the Kahanim are, the descendants of Aaron, but it's, that's what we should tell them. Tell all the Kahanim that the sanctity and the uniqueness of being a Kohen is not something which they have achieved on their own merit, but because they are the descendants of Aaron. They are the children of Aaron. And it's because Aaron was so pure and so holy. As the Ramban refers to Aaron, he was like a malach elikin. He was like a living angel in his total devotion and service unto God. And therefore, Aaron earned the sanctity to be the Kohen representing Klal Yisrael and doing the service and entering the Holy of Holies on Yom Kippur. And all sanctity that every Kohen throughout the ages possesses is because they are the offspring and the seed of Aaron. Know this fact. 
This is what we should teach the Kahanim. And tell them that they too should emulate Aaron. Don't just tell them you are the offspring of Aaron and it's because of your ancestor that you have these laws, but rather that you are charged with a mission to pursue and emulate the behavior and essence of Aaron. What was the essence of Aaron? Aaron was an Ohib Shalom and Rei Shalom. He loved peace. He pursued peace. He lived to see Shalom. He did everything in his power to make Shalom between husband and wife, friends, business associates, whoever it might be. There's an incident in which it says that someone said to his wife, I'll have nothing to do with you until you, you spit in the eye of Aaron Akohi. How could a person do such a thing? Aaron heard about this. He went to the woman and he said, please do me a favor. I have something in my eye. I can't get it out. I'm going to open my eye. Could you blow in it? And the woman blew. And as she blew, there might have been some moisture. Aaron put aside all of his honor and his glory to make Sholem. And this is what the Kahanama told. We are descendants. You are descendants of Aaron and pursue that which makes Aaron so unique and holy. And this, our sages tell us, this is not just the responsibility of the Kahana. And as Rashi says, the verse is teaching the Kahana, we have responsibility to teach our children. It's not just telling us what we have to do, the Torah is revealing to us how to do it. Kahanim, do you know who you are? You're the sons of Aaron. Do you know who Aaron is? The holy angel of God in human manifestation. And you have been chosen to pursue and reflect and behave like Aaron and live for Sholem. And that's why Aaron was chosen to do the service. What is the service in the temple? The service in the temple is bringing shalom between God and his children and Kuala Yisrael and all mankind. Know who you are. Recognize how unique you are. And with that, you will willingly embrace all the laws of being a Kohen. Laws of being a Kohen and many restrictions. Places we can't go. Women we're not allowed to marry. Things we can't do. There had to be a special path for the Kahanim to go to the temple to make sure there's not even a dead insect over there. Kahanim had to be very careful what they could touch and whatever. Kahanim is the reason they had to be extremely cautious. How does a person develop a desire to live such a life? The answer is because they understand what it means to be a Kohen. <clears throat> they understand that being a Kohen, this is something which <clears throat> they understand what it means to be a Kohen. That being a Kohen means that they are chosen for a higher calling, a loftier existence, an existence in which they can serve God. They've been chosen to perform this holy service. And this is the source for the mitzvah of training and teaching our children. How is it the source for training and teaching our children? How do we teach our children? We teach them, well, you're Jewish, and we can't do this, and we can't do that, and the Jew doesn't do this, and on the Sabbath we refrain and everything. Children don't want to hear that. Not when we have a world in which everything is available to us. What, you're telling me that I have to curb and I have to refrain? Who wants to refrain? Who wants to be limited? The answer is, this is how we teach our children. Do you understand that later in the Pasha, it says, Dabra al-Bene Yisrael, speak to the children of Israel and say to them, we find this similar statement, speak and say. Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, do you know what it means to be children of Israel? Who is Israel? Yaakov. Yaakov was attacked by an angel and he was able to defeat the angel because he was so holy and so pure. 
And for that reason, the descendants of Yaakov are known as the children of Israel, and we were chosen to receive God's Torah. And God demonstrated his boundless love for us, that he, is, he took us out one nation from another. Who ever heard of such a thing, it says in, in Chumash Devarim? of taking one entire nation from another nation, all the miracles that we experienced and we saw that we share with our children to this very day at the pace of Seder and throughout the entire uh, life that we have. Zeichel Lietzias Mitzrayim every Friday night. We remember the exodus of Egypt. Look at the miracles. Look what God did for us. We stood at Sinai and Hashem tells Moshe, speak to the children of Israel. Tell them they are my mamleches kahana v'goy kodesh and my skula. They are my priestly nation, chosen. They are a treasure unto me from amongst all the nations. If we know who we are and we realize our relationship with Hashem and how privileged we are to serve our Creator, which opens the portals to eternity, then we can train our children. And we say, these aren't restrictions. This isn't just refrain from this, don't do this, don't do that. But on the contrary, we're ascending to a loftier level. We are transcending this world and entering the portal of all eternity. The portal to eternity, this is our Torah. This is our mitzvahs. This is what we can achieve when we eat matzah, we eat moron, we make kiddush. We have, we eat the kosher food. We have the wonderful Shabbos. We dwell with Hashem. We stand in prayer before God. We do the mitzvahs. It's our greatest privilege. It's our greatest honor. The Torah is telling us, speak to the Kahanim. Speak to the children of Israel. Tell them who they are. Emulate Aharon. Emulate Avraham, Yitzhak, Yaakov, Sarah, Rivka, Rachel, Aleya. Follow in their footsteps. Know who we are. How privileged to be chosen by God. And with that, our children will embrace the traditions and the mitzvahs that they see their parents revering and their grandparents. And with this, we'll have future generations of proud, wonderful, holy Jews. Stay safe. Stay healthy. And stay Jewish. Have a wonderful Shabbos.